So here's a 2005 VW Golf. This is a Mark IV model, not very different from our 2000 Jetta. Now earlier this summer, I was loading some gear in the trunk, the hatchback, I guess it's properly called. So I'm loading gear in the trunk back here, and I hear this tremendously loud hissing noise. Pshhh, went on for 30 seconds or more. I thought, sure, I had a flat tire here on the left side. So I walked over here, got my head out of the trunk, thank God. I look at my tire, it's not going down, the car's not going down. What in the world is making this noise? All of a sudden, the trunk lid comes smashing down. Boom! So I guess the first thing to take out of this is that if that kind of happens to you, and you're putting gear in the trunk, and you hear this big, very loud hissing noise, in my case it was coming from the left side right here, get your head out of the trunk, because this lid is surprisingly heavy. Okay, so what was the problem? Well, it was, this, it was the strut that had been originally here. This strut failed. And of course at the time, the question was, do we need one new strut or two new struts? So, what about the one that had been here on the right? Was this also bad? Had it failed when the car was parked and no one was around to hear it? Had it failed on someone else who drove the car and didn't say anything? So do we need two struts or one? Well, I'll answer that question. You need just one strut if that happens to you because it takes two working struts to lift uh, this hatchback. All right, now what are our options? Here's the, my remaining original good strut is right here. This is a good one. Our options are to buy a new OEM strut. At the time, I didn't know if I needed two or one. They are outrageously expensive. And then I also found that there were two aftermarket struts, two different kinds of aftermarket struts. And you could roughly buy a pair of aftermarket struts for about $30 um, or less. So that's what I decided to do. Now, I'm going to show you what the ones I bought look like. They look like this. Came in a white box. I got two for a little over 30 bucks. Very, very easy to install. So let, let's see how this goes on. This is literally a one minute job. This is the socket that's at the top. Now it's going to be quite dirty on you. So this area here will be quite dirty. So clean this off if you can. Spray some WD-40 in there. And then in most cases, you can just grab this and pop it right off. If you have trouble, this little C-ring can be slid up. And that will put less pressure on this plastic socket and pop it right off. In my case, I didn't know what to expect. So I put a little board under here and a screwdriver. And I was surprised at how little force it took to remove this. So, now when you get it out, the ball that remains behind will be quite dirty, so wipe it off with some spray lubricant. Now what about the other end? Once you get the top off, this has to be rotated. So I'm sort of showing you how it has to go. And once you rotate it, say to this angle, the bottom just pops off, it'll just sort of fall off so easily. Uh, that's just the way it's made. I actually installed these. My wife and I were going out. And as usual, you know, the man goes out a little bit before the wife. I don't think this took me two minutes to do both sides. So I had these done even before she was out of the house. It, it, there's really nothing to it. Now, what's the difference between these $30 struts for a pair and these here, which probably are $140, $150 for a pair? Well, the originals worked such that you could put your hand in here and it was sort of like a assisted movement. So as you move this, it just followed your hand. That's not how these work. And here's the thing. This is the reason I'm making this video. I'm easily coming up here, and now you reach a point where it... The originals never did that. The original was sort of 
uh, assisted movement all the way up. So I'm curious, I'm curious as to what the other set of aftermarket chocks that look quite a bit different from these, they're a little thicker. I'm curious as to how those would work. Because if this ever happened to me again and I needed a pair of shocks, uh, I, I might just try the others because this is this movement. It's 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 just it works fine. I'm not complaining. It was very inexpensive. It, it just kind of what would the word be? Cheap. Now, optionally, since you only needed one. You could have just bought one shock and made do with the good one. I saved this in case. Why didn't I leave one on there? Because they're different. They look different, and I, I just didn't think the car would look right with two different shocks. But it would have worked fine, and it did, in fact, work fine. Once I put this on, the original one on, on this side, it worked fine. So really, if you're in this position, you only need one shock. And it's really only going to take you a minute or two to do the entire job. Let's make sure you have some spray lube and a uh, rag to clean the ball joints. And really it's nothing. Now how do you hold the trunk lid up while you're working on it? Well, I just got a stick. And I put the stick in this hole. Of course there was a lot of weight on this. It's a little short for right now, but it worked, worked fine and it held it up sort of like that. All by itself because there was so much weight on the trunk lid. Well, uh, so if you're facing the same problem as I was, I hope you find this little video informative. And don't hesitate to try this job yourself because there's really nothing to it. Thanks for watching.